Before you watch the video, I want to give a huge apology for the bad audio quality. You see, I recently got a wireless mic, which you can see over here. And instead of putting it outside of my clothing, like I have now, I put it inside my hoodie, which made it sound really muffled. I know, rookie mistake, but the video is definitely worth the bad audio. And if you persevere, I promise you're going to find out something really cool about the new Google SDK. Today, I'm going to show you how to really easily build AI applications using Google Gemini without dealing with multiple APIs or complex authentication, all because of their new JavaScript SDK that puts everything in one place. So image, audio and video generation, as well as multimodal processing and much more using a bunch of different models, which is not how the old one worked. So we're going to go through all the good and bad things about this new SDK including if it stands up to OpenAI's one. But before we do that, let's take a look at how to implement it. Oh, and trust me, you're gonna to wanna to hit the subscribe button. So this is a super simple website where a user can upload a video. So in my case, I'm gonna find a video here that I got from the internet. And once I upload the video, this is a preview of it. So all it is is a girl playing Jenga with her family. I can get Google Gemini to analyze the video and tell me what's happening. So let's hit this, which will take a while. And once it's done, here is the result. And look at how much detail we get. I mean, it tells us that the tower is already partially built. And this result was also insanely fast. I didn't speed the video up. This is actually how quick it is for Gemini to analyze a short clip. And the SDK is so flexible that all I need to do is change a few lines of code and this whole project can turn into an AI image generation app of cats chasing bulls, apparently. And I can also turn it into an AI video generator. Let's take a look at how easy this was to implement. So the whole app is built on Express using Malta for file uploads. And it's also using the Google Gen AI SDK for JavaScript. Let's scroll down to the actual implementation of the SDK, which is in this analyze post endpoint. And we can see down here that a new Google Gen AI class is being instantiated with an argument of an object containing the API key, which I've stored in the .m file. Now, the reason this is an object and not a single argument is because you can add a bunch of options related to Vertex AI. Then we use the generate content method from models to actually execute the analysis. So here is the prompt. Here is the path for the asset, which in this case is a video. And we can also add a system prompt down here. And that's pretty much it. We just get the text from the result and render that in the browser. To change this code to generate images instead, all we have to do is change the method from generate content to generate images, select a model, add a prompt, and then extract the image bytes from the result, then convert it to a base64 image, which can be rendered in the browser. For video generation, the code is a bit more involved because the video is first generated on Google servers and this could take a few minutes. So the code needs to keep checking when the video is done. And then once it's done, it downloads it to the user's computer. But luckily there's plenty of good documentation for that on the official Google Gemini website. But I'm only just scratching the surface. This SDK can do so much more from being able to call functions in your actual application to uploading files and referencing them in prompts getting information from websites via URLs, having real-time audio conversations with the model. And check this out. You can ground your results with Google search, which in my opinion is one of the killer features of this SDK. But there are a few things I don't like about it. I mean, the SDK itself is really impressive. And I'm glad that us JavaScript devs can have as much fun with Google Gemini as those snake timing developers. I don't understand why I wasn't able to use the latest image generation model when anyone with a Replicate account can get access to it. I understand that it may be locked behind the Vertex AI platform, which Google wants to push, but I don't get why I don't have access to it via the SDK. I mean, it blows my mind that there is a chance that the VO3 API can be on Replicate first before it gets access via the SDK, which doesn't make sense. But also, one thing that doesn't make sense is that the API design, as you would have noticed, is very different from the OpenAI API design. And the fact that it's different means that if you're creating an app that switches between different models for text chat, 
it's much easier just to use the OpenAI SDK with the Gemini API key than to use the Gemini SDK itself, which again, doesn't make much sense to me. But honestly, if you're doing anything else other than text, so video, images, audio, whatever, it makes so much more sense to use one of the Google models instead of the others, not because of the good JavaScript SDK, but also because their models are so much cheaper. And who doesn't like to make more money, right? 